So in this specific section of our lecture, I'd like to take you through the basic information necessary in order to set up general ledger. First thing, as a reminder, you needed to create a legal entity, set up the number sequences, and optionally create organizational hierarchy. And as I explained in previous session, organizational hierarchies were the way that you could break down the structure of your company for a variety of different purposes, especially for reporting if you may. You do have a session in regard to the reporting and I will demonstrate how those organizational hierarchies will appear on the management reporter, but you do have a separate training for management reporter you will probably take advantage of. Please pay attention here. I am in Seahorse Retailers and currently I have no data. On the row center, you notice that there is no value. They're all zero. But beautifully, the row center works fine. I have gadgets everywhere, but I have no data. So who designed this row center? Microsoft given lots of row centers to you out of the box. Combination of Power View and Power Pivot and Excel manipulation of SQL Server alongside with Dynamics AX analysis services and SQL Server analysis services together and reporting business intelligence, you can actually see a very fantastic way of looking at the snapshots of data. Needless to say, there are some companion apps available at the moment from Microsoft Download Center that you can download for Windows 8, Surface, iPad, iPhone, Android, and Windows Phone. They're all free. So you could take advantage of so many of these nice chart-related data for reporting purposes. But let's get into setting up the general ledger. In order to do this, first thing first, I go to the general ledger. The first thing that we set up was indeed number sequences, and that was mandatory. That was explained in the previous session. However, in the next series of things that are mandatory, the first thing you need to consider is a currency ideology. So if you take a look at the currency, by an installation of Dynamics AX for the very first time, Microsoft offers a list of existing currencies that are available in the world. If I maximize this form, you notice that all these currencies are listed. Not necessarily you are using all these currencies for some of your customers. Maybe you use them all, maybe you don't. If you are in a business of exchanging money, like those booths in airports or kiosks on the streets on Europe perhaps, or banks that they change money, Maybe they are dealing with all these currencies or some. But if you are dealing with a vendor or a customer resides in certain countries, you only deal with few of these currencies, let's say. There are a few things you need to notice. There's a new button on this specific form. Probably you say, why in the world do I have a new button for the sets of currencies? There are two things you need to consider. If a, a specific event's political or geopolitical changes happen in the world and by then Microsoft has not updated the list of currencies like a separation of a country, independence of a new country or merging of two countries together or just creation of a new currency between different countries like Euro happened a decade ago almost. So you can actually just add it right there. But that's not the only reason. You can be creative and you can create fictitious or custom currencies for reporting purposes. Let me give you an idea has happened in the past that a customer of mine wanted to have a reporting based on exchange rates between USD and a specific currency on multiple rates and do the comparison to see which rate should it be applied. So if I do have exchange rate between USD and let's say Danish Krone, I have only one way to do the exchange rate. But I could create a dummy currency called USD1 or USD2 or USD3 and have a different rates for those and then create a report and then have a comparison between them. The sky is the limit what you could do when it comes to creativity. So that's another reason that you have it here. You have the capability to create as many as currencies as you like, even repeated currencies for the same country, but different code. They're not real currency, they're mimicking or cloning the currency of the currency of your choice. Why do you do that? Because then you have a different way of setting up different rates for different reasons for reporting purposes and comparison. That's an example of what you could do. Now, as you can tell, there's a currency code, there's a name, there's a symbol, and there's a currency code that is international. I just randomly go and pick and choose some of these. If I scroll down and pick and choose Euro, that's one of the currency that we are going to use in my training sessions. You see that the symbol Euro is already set up. Not all the currencies have the symbol. In order to plug in the symbol, you could use Microsoft Word symbols or you could use the old-fashioned way. Pressing the Alt and putting the ASCII characters and release the Alt is going to bring up the character for you. It doesn't matter how you bring it up. And then, as you see, there is a checkbox called triangulation currency. What does that mean? 